Precision Research just announced their new Miro M320S at NAB 2012. And who better to talk about that camera than the fine folks at Able Cinetech? So that's what we're going to do. Well, the Miro 320S is the latest in the line of phantom cameras. Now, you look at the camera here, this is with all our very accessories on it. What is great about this camera is not only is it so physically petite and so you can shoot in angle ways that you could not capture otherwise, but also that the price point is also dramatically lowered. It is an uncompressed raw camera, digital cinema quality, 1920 by 1080, 12 gigs of internal memory. And you can then shoot up to uh, 1540 frames per second at that resolution in 12-bit uncompressed raw, which is a huge, huge thing. Native ISO of 1000, it's a, a great dynamic range really good looking camera even if you weren't shooting at incredibly high speeds. Let me tell you what the workflow is like in phantoms in general, which is that you take uh, a, a shot and you're shooting at super high speed, so you just go into a buffer here, like just a rolling memory, and you just capture your, your moment that you really want, because it's such super high speed, you never like hit trigger and then hit stop, you know, it, it's very difficult to work that way. So it's just constantly recording, and then your event happens, you say, okay, got it. All right, well, you've filled up this huge memory. Now you've got to decide what part of it you actually want as your shot, and you offload that. You can offload directly to a computer system, or you can go into internal memory. On the Phantom Flex, that's the big difference between the cameras. Phantom Flex can take the whole memory and offload it to the Cinemag in about 20 seconds. This is going to take a little bit of time. You have this new type of memory, which is the Cineflash, and this little SSD can take that signal it might take a couple minutes to do the full file, but you're able to do, use very inexpensive media and you can be able to quickly continue on with your work. Now, once you've got it onto, that, uh, onto the, the, Cinefile, the Cineflash, now you can take this little card reader, eSATA connection, go to your computer, you can put another flash in there, you can hold a, a bunch of takes on here, this is 128 gigs on this particular one, and you'll be able to continue your work and just keep moving like a regular camera. What an editor has to know in order to work with this material, the first thing they can know is to come to our website because we have tons of information available about it. There's, these are uncompressed raw files. That's a, that's a hell of a thing. It's a lot of material, a really, really fat, rich file, which is fantastic for the image quality you can get out of it. I mean, it's like shooting a raw film negative at that point. But it can also be something big to work with. Now, there are programs that can take that file and put it into a native uh, QuickTime wrapper so that you can then just edit in Final Cut. There's other systems that will edit with it directly, you know, using the raw file. There's a lot of ways that you can really use the material directly in that fashion. But I can also tell you that people take the HDSDI feed out of this camera and go to a small recorder and just <laughs> record, say, in ProRes, and they're happy with that. It gives them a beautiful image, and then they move on. And it, it's really about what's more appropriate for whatever your job might be. So the workflow can be quite huge. It can be very, very petite, depending on how you want to work. It's not a particularly complicated system. Back in the day, people were really afraid of raw files. Now, everybody, there, there's solutions aplenty for how to work with this stuff. Well, everything looks better in slow motion. But really, the way I like to think about the use of the camera is to show process, because that seems like instantaneous. But if I slow that down by a thousand frames, 1500 frames a second, suddenly I can see a series of steps involved. Now, when I hit my hand there, energy is transferred, the skin ripples, there's a reaction time to a person hearing it. and There's things that are going on in something as simple as that. But any physical product, any device, any, any process is extrapolated when you slow down, when you go into slow motion. And so now you are not just taking something and making it longer, you're actually revealing the process behind it. And that can illustrate what a product is, it can illustrate what a process is, and you can then use it to explain what the device is really about. So there's actually a huge amount of use for it rather than just sort of slowing things down to make them pretty. It's really about explaining what a technology is. It's you know, a fascinating educational tool, a fascinating uh, for manufacturers, just a way to explain what their products really are.
So if you're a corporate producer and you've been wondering how to liven up your industrial footage, if it be in a factory or an OR, anything that shows a process of your product, this is the camera for you, the Miro 320. It's light and it's inexpensive. So when you do shoot that footage, make sure you post a picture of that production on our Facebook page. Until next time. So where do you download information over Drive? Go to Cruise Control's website and click podcasts.